Hi everyone, Christina here. I was going to upload another card video, another card design for you guys today, but like many of you have discovered, sometimes you just go a little bit burnt out. Let's back up a minute. Over the last few weeks, I have been doing a bunch of really creative things, really fun things. I've been preparing for my online class. So, you know, shameless plug, link below. I've been designing a bunch of stamps and dies and stencils for an upcoming release at simonsysstamp.com. And then just a bunch of other really fun creative things that have sort of been on my list for a while. Doing all of these really super creative things has left me feeling a little, well, like I need a break. So today I'm gonna to show you what I do when I need a break from something creative, but I still wanna get, you know, into my art supplies. I have a new watercolor palette filled with Magello Mission Gold watercolors that I've had for a few months, but I don't know what the colors look like, or rather, I don't know where each color is in the palette. So I need to create kind of a swatch map to show me where each color is. I'm gonna walk you through how I make sure that it's the correct size, have all the different spots for every single color, and let's get started. So here is my watercolor palette. I have all of my Magello Mission Gold paints squeezed into all the different wells. After I squeeze them in, I let it dry until they were set and not coming out of the palette. So this is actually the swatch map that I created. And when I went to edit the video footage of me creating this swatch map, I realized you couldn't see what I was doing when I was penciling out all the sections. So I'm going to do it again and just show you how I figured out all of those sections. So first I counted how many wells there were going all the way along the length. And there were 14. So I'm going to write this down on a piece of scratch paper, um, kind of just diagramming where the measurements are. So there's 14 across. And then going up the side, I'm actually going to have six sections. There's four in that top half and then one at the bottom and I'm going to have an empty spot in between. So I took, some, I took my paper and I measured the width just for one half of the palette and I'm doing this so that my swatch map can fit inside the palette. So I took out my paper trimmer and I trimmed down my paper. And this one was just a little bit bigger than five and a half so just to make it easier on the measuring I went ahead and trimmed it at five and a half. So now I'm going to figure out how I need to divide up this paper going each direction. So I'm going to use the calculator on my phone and I'm going to take the, um, first I'm going to take the width, which was five and a half inches across, and I'm going to divide that by six because I need it to have it be in six sections. So it's actually 0.91 with some numbers, but in order to make the measuring easier on myself, I'm just going to take that down to three quarters of an inch or 0.75. This is going to make it a lot easier to get those measurements just right. If you want to be precise and have the exact measurement you can, but this just makes it a whole lot easier on me. So I actually measured out all those six sections and it turns out that it was about four and a half inches across. So I, I'm going to trim that down one more time. So now it's the exact width that I need. So my paper is 11 inches tall and I've divided it by 14 because I need 14 sections. And that happens to be just slightly larger than three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to measure these sections going down 14 times at three quarters of an inch as well. Just so happens that the measurement that I chose for both of these is the same. So my swatches on this particular size of paper will be three quarters of an inch square. So I just drew in those two vertical lines that I'll need and now I'm going to measure out the three quarters of an inch going down the long side. I did want to mention I'm using a T-square ruler with just, which just makes everything a lot easier, but you could definitely do this with a regular ruler. So after I had those 14 sections marked, I went back in with my ruler and I first had that um, the first line all the way across, but then after that I only needed them in the top and bottom sections. So as I move along the side here, I'm only going to be penciling the top and bottom, and then I got all 14 sections and then trimmed off the excess off the end. So now I have the, the right dimensions of my paper, and I'll just finish up by doing those other lines. And that, fit, that makes all of those little squares. So I'm going to erase the little sections here for the gaps, and that's just going to help me um, orient this swatch map according to my 
palette since there is that gap in the palette. So I have this almost ready. I'm just going to open up the palette so you can see how it relates. And I've got all of those sections ready to paint the different colors of watercolor. And it slips inside my palette if I want to let it uh, the palette dry after I've used it, let everything dry, and then I can close it up and store my palette with the swatch map. So here I am back to my original swatch map, which has a little bit of a different orientation or a different dimension on these different squares. And that's because I was using a piece of scratch watercolor paper and I didn't want to have to cut a whole sheet of watercolor paper down. So I just used what I had. So these, um, measurements going down were actually only half an inch instead of three quarters of an inch. When I'm painting in all the different swatch colors, I'm painting every other one. And that gives me time to let each of these colors dry before going in and painting the color that's right next to it. This prevents the colors from mixing with each other. I'm also painting these in a way that I have a full strength of the pigment and then it kind of fades out so I get a little bit of the, the different variations in transparency. So that is all of those colors and then I just trimmed it down to just the right size. If you want to label all the different colors you can, I didn't but you could if you wanted to. So that is my swatch map. I like to do one of these for every watercolor palette so I know what the colors look like. Thanks so much for watching today. I'll be back very soon with a usual card video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.